I want to talk about how the electronics work on the Squeezebox keyboard. It's made up of a bunch of individual components and this, this component I call a key well and it is just a 3D printed housing for three key switches. This makes a column on the keyboard that you would type with the single finger and the column has three rows and I call the rows A, B, and C when I'm doing my CAD and uh, firmware configuration. Now this part has what you would expect on a hand-wired keyboard. Each row has a diode and the column is wired together with that yellow wire. Um, and by the nature of that, it is now an independent macro pad. You can actually um, use it on its own, which is, which is really handy. Um, and I'll just also point out in this version we have these hot swap sockets, meaning the keys aren't fixed. So if I just press on the stem of this key, I can release it. Um, and there's the hot swap socket housing for it. Um, and I could swap it for a different type of switch if I wanted to. And then I can put it back, put in a different switch. So that's hot swap. So the way this works is I have two groups of three wires. They're labeled A, B, and C. And this one can go to the microcontroller to wire up the rows. So the way I set up my firmware, I have the rows on this side and I just start with the outermost pin. And that's a good hack because I don't have to read the tiny labels. I can just start on the outermost pin and connect inward. And same thing on the column side. So for the first column, I just connect the wire to the, the, the end pin and it's, it's straightforward. So now I've got that wired up, I can connect USB-C to my microcontroller. And you'll see the light comes on. And if you watch my screen over there, I'll type this. I get my A for the row, and then F I have is uh, the next row, and K. This is all set up with a test firmware, so it's just easy to find that everything is typing the right letters. Um, so it works. It's a, it's a three-key macro pad. It's not useful <laughs> on its own, but for debugging and understanding how it works, um, did you solder correctly? Did you wire correctly? It's really nice to just do a little bit of work and check that it's all good. Now, once we've got one of these working, all we do to make the keyboard bigger is connect another one. So I have another one. This is basically the identical part. And I can grab these DuPont wires, ABC, and pair them up with these ones. And to get the A's to line up, I just need to flip one of these. So I've got ABC mapped together. Now this row is longer, but I need another column. So this wire has to go back to the next pin, next available pin on the microcontroller. So that's that pin. And now this switch should type a B and a G and an L. So now I have uh, two columns and three rows each. And to complete the keyboard, there's one more like this. And that's for pinky, ring, and middle fingers. And then there's a double size one, a double wide one for the index finger, which gets two columns. And then there's a big thumb cluster. And when you wire all of them up in this, this kind of daisy chain like this, um, that makes one hand of the split squeeze box keyboard.